Hi, welcome to my next video. This is the fifth video in this series in which I show you how I paint the new Storyfronts illustrations. I did 10 illustrations in this series of made up Japanese stories. So this series is already finished. You can see all the pieces on my website, but I still had this video in my library. So I decided to edit it and post it to show you how I made these. In this video, I decided to focus more on the coloring process, so on watercolors, but also first on the digital color test that I do in Procreate. Before going in with the watercolors, when I want to test if what I have in mind for this piece, the color scheme and the colors is going to work okay, I do sometimes a test like this digitally. When I use the line art that I already did for this piece, I usually just take a photo of it with my iPad and then I roughly color the whole thing in Procreate to check if the colors will work. Doing this allows me to later focus on the watercolor painting process more so I don't have to kind of second guess myself. I already have a nice reference that I can follow, which sometimes also has some additional details that are not in the line art that I decided to add while I was doing the color test in Procreate. So here, for example, the insides of the shop, I decided to paint without lines and doing this first in Procreate allows me to kind of experiment how the insides of the shop should look like. And this is a Hanko store, so a store making and selling personalized seals, so stamps with a name, which are used in Japan to sign legal documents. And sometimes even like in everyday life, you have to stamp when you receive a package, for example. So a store like this should look, I think, a bit traditional because it's long in business. Hanko stamps are a traditional thing in Japan. So I wanted to use wood elements here and the traditional Japanese kawara roof, so the tiled roof. But I didn't want to make it dark and heavy. So I had to experiment a bit in Procreate first to find a nice color scheme so it looks wooden and nice and retro and old, but doesn't look kind of musty and dark. I also wanted to add something special to this shop so it stands out. In the end I came up with this huge sign over the entrance that looks like the back of a stamp. So also has the letters in reverse that look like they could be stamped on paper. So the letters should be red from the red ink that is used usually on Japanese stamps and the space between those letters should be kind of dark so the letters are easily visible. I also made the tiles that are at the edges of the roof, which most of the time are kind of round, into something that looks like a Japanese stamp, so it also has the red seal in front. Overall, when adding details like this, I have to be careful not to make these shops too fantastic and too unbelievable and keep these to minimum, even though adding weird elements like these is pretty fun. I tried to keep the rest of design kind of traditional, just a display window on the left side showing all kinds of product samples like sample stamps, sample uh, nameplates and all kinds of things that you can etch. Nice wooden windows on the second floor and also wooden sliding doors. When painting wooden elements like these, I try to not only make them just brown, but also suggest the wood texture whenever I can. For this, using a brush with a really sharp tip helps a lot. I usually paint with a roundish tip brush, not to be too detailed and to have more round brush touches, but for things like letters and textures like these, brush with a sharp tip is really helpful. I bought recently and have been testing an Escoda Perla brush, which has a really, really sharp tip. This is a synthetic fiber brush and it has been really nice so far. So I like it and use it a lot for really, really difficult details. But again, I have to control myself not to put too much really small detail in, not to make the picture overcrowded and too detailed. So I use it only sparingly. Okay, there is a bit more of close-up painting video to go, so I'll meet you at the end.
Okay, this picture is nearly complete. I had a lot of fun painting this, but as I told you in my previous video, I want to keep things fresh. So I decided to stop for now on 10 shops. You can see all of them on my website and also there are prints on my in-print store. Currently I'm working on a bigger thing that involves a lot of digital painting and I'll be able to show these to you with videos next year probably. But in the meantime I'm also trying to get back, as I said, to my narrative work, so stuff like comics and so on. Okay, that's it for this video, as always feel free to comment, share and subscribe, and you can also support me on Patreon. It's your support there that allows me to do private projects like this illustration series and also to focus on developing my bigger narrative things. Okay, see you in the next one, bye!